downtown Houston on an absolutely perfect football Friday. They got your Thanksgiving going in a different direction. This is an important game in the American Conference. The Cougars celebrating their seniors and finishing up their regular season. For the opponent, one of the most relentless teams in the country, coming from Annapolis, the Naval Academy. What a glorious day on the University of Houston campus for this matchup. We're showing you the American Conference today on ESPN. The Cougars finish up their regular season while Navy has that Army game looming in a few weeks, but they need this one today to get back into good form. Hello again, everybody, along with Jen Latta and Mac Brown. I'm Dave Lamont. Thank you for joining us. Glad you're making us part of your Thanksgiving weekend. Both these teams are bowl eligible, but there is a lot of intrigue in this game. And for that, it's time for 6 and 60. Navy has played with three different quarterbacks this year, and they all can run this option offense. Houston's defense will find out who's going to start today the same time we do. Three weeks ago, Anthony Gargiulo had just 20 carries total on the season, but the junior fullback has emerged as an offensive weapon for the mids, tallying a career-high 20 carries versus Notre Dame last week. Coach Niamat has been the head coach in Navy longer than every other coach in the American Conference combined. He's the winningest coach in Academy's history, and his relentless effort is copied by his players. Ed Oliver is one of the best defensive linemen in college football. He's fast, he's quick, he plays with low pads, and he's expected to penetrate today and disrupt Navy's offense. After playing primarily as a wide receiver, De'Ara King has started the last three games at QB for Houston, thrown for 714 yards and five TDs, also rushed for six scores. Major Applewhite's first year as Houston head coach has had plenty of highs and lows. Having been mentored by Nick Saban, Tom Herman, and yes, Mac Brown, the Major has the training to handle everything the job entails. And here at Houston, what an honor for everybody here to have the 41st president of the United States, George H.W. Bush, on hand for the commemorative coin toss. And everybody and the officials coming over. Of course, he was a Navy man, a uh, fighter pilot at an alarmingly young age in World War II, and uh, served his country very well. So we're uh, honored to have the president there. Ken Niamatololo is the head coach for the Naval Academy, his 10th season. He's presiding over a program that he is, has 707 wins, but he has the most of any coach, 83. And Major Applewhite in his first full season here in H-Town with six wins so far. Tough loss for them last week against an improved Tulane team in New Orleans. Well, Dave, we'd like to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Hopefully they had a wonderful Thanksgiving yesterday, but we've got so many great games, starting with this one today, throughout the weekend. I'm so honored to do a game again up with represents Navy, our military academy, um, Major Apple White, who played and coached for me, and how cool for President Bush to be out there to start this game. Yeah, that was a, a real extra thrill for everybody here. Good crowd, utterly perfect day to do whatever it is you'd want to do. We're going to do a little football right here. Houston won the toss, they deferred, so Navy will get it. Here we go. This is Zach Frade. He'll let it go, and we'll see Navy. And now we know who the quarterback is going to be for Navy. It looks like it's going to be the junior Zach Avey. But before we do that, let's follow up with Jen Latta about a story she did last week on game day. Jen? Well, thank you very much, Dave. Yeah, you might notice throughout the game these red heart helmets that say JJ. They are for Jaron Jasper, the 14-year-old son of Navy Ica offensive coordinator Ivan Jasper. Five months ago, Jaron was headed to a routine physical for high school when he found out he had an accelerated heartbeat. Now, the doctors did a procedure. The procedure did not go as planned. His heart stopped. He would have to be revived on the operating table. He was able to come back. Two months after being in the hospital, he was able to go home. Unfortunately, Jaron now needs a heart transplant. It has been a difficult five months for the Navy program, but football, as you can imagine, has been a galvanizing force for this family and for the Navy community. It is, Jen, and that was a magnificent bit of work on your part, too, a week ago. We want to thank our colleagues at Showtime for the video. They are chronicling the mids this season. And we saw Anthony Gargiulo, whom Jen talked about at the top, get a good solid first down, a gain of about seven. It is Zach Avey. There was some question as to who will be starting at quarterback for Navy. And this time, Gargiulo may be a hard-earned yard dropped by the middle of that Houston defense. And Dave, for our fans, we're going to see 
that fullback all day long. Navy football is run the ball, kill the clock, have fewer penalties than the other team, do not turn the ball over, dominate time of possession, and not let the other team's offense get on the field. When they're leading going into the fourth quarter, they win the game. We do see Josh Brown is out there. And Malcolm Perry. And it's Gargiulo rumbling for the first down. As Jen mentioned back at the top, this guy really wasn't playing that much until the last two, three games, and he's played very well. This is the play we're going to see throughout the day. We've had three plays, all of them, Gargiulo up inside. They have to establish inside the tackles if they want to accomplish what they want. Now, for Houston, you've got to do something to stop the fullback and make the ball bounce to the outside. They cannot continue to let Navy run up inside. For 33, Chris High is now the fullback. And it will be high on the carry, and high will get to the 42-yard line. That's a six-yard pickup. And boy, that's just ideal first down yardage for a team that lives on running the football. Yeah, Houston's going to have to start making them do something else other than hand it to the fullback. Really interesting about Navy's discipline last week. High was not paying attention on the sideline like Coach Ken wanted him to. He didn't let him play. And he's his leading rusher at fullback. And he didn't let him play the whole game. Navy with the pitch. This will be John Brown the third, and down he goes into Houston territory and shoved out of bounds around the 40-yard line. Now with a triple option, you pound the fullback, you pound the fullback, you pound the fullback, and then you take the ball out of the fullback's gut, you're reading it inside, you take it to the end, you pitch it, you hit the crease, safeties have to come up, you can see 23 Williams coming up, coming up late. That's what makes Navy good, and just watch how long they keep the ball. Navy will keep it, there's the pitch. This is Brown trying to get outside. Excuse me, 29, Daryl Bonner, co-captain, and didn't get very much there. Maybe three if they're generous. And that's the way to play the option. You take the dive, you make the quarterback pitch. Your corner makes him turn up to the inside, Myers, and then you've got Garrett Davis, the safety, inside out trying to tackle the pitch. That was the perfect way to play the option offense from Navy. And they're happy they still made three. They hit their second seven. High, the fullback to the 26. So now it'll be third down and six. Oliver and Gerard Carter, number 52, in there for the Cougars. Carter playing a little bit more now after a slow start because of injuries. Yeah, penetration again by Ed Oliver. One thing that the Navy coaches thought we got to run at him, we got to run away from him, and we've got to read him some. Right now, Ed Oliver's made two key plays for losses in this ball game. He's the best player on the field. He, he's a, probably a first round draft choice after another year. It's high, the fullback, and he is pushed back. They're going to mark him about two and a half yards short of the first down. Matthew Adams, an interior linebacker, in there on the stop. And no indication of a field goal unit coming out here. Nah, they don't like field goals. The field goal by Bennett Mooring is wide left. So they decided after the timeout to attempt the three, and the junior from Bentonville, Arkansas, just missed. So Houston will hold, and we'll get to see the Cougars on offense for the first time today. We'll take a look at De'Eric King when we return to H-Town. 0-0. Cougars coming to bat. So these are how the team celebrated their Thanksgivings, the Houston and the Naval Academy. I don't know how much the coaches are able to eat the night before a game, but uh, certainly the players, I'm sure, made up for it. We learned that uh, too much turkey can wear you out, so we, we, we didn't let them eat. But you have your Thanksgiving tomorrow. Too much coaching can wear you out, too. Too much coaching oh. can wear you out. Now, Duke Catalan is into the tailback for Houston, number two, along with the quarterback for De'Aaron King. Catalan was injured last week, didn't finish the two-lane game, but he starts with a reception here and is pushed out of bounds by Wynn Howard, the middle linebacker at the 29-yard line. It's a gain of six. Because Navy kept the ball 12 plays for six minutes and 22 seconds. Now the pressure's on Houston. They've got to stay on the field. 
They cannot lose a possession here. Will try to play quickly, which is risky against a team that hogs the ball like Navy does. Catalan is brought down short of the first down. DJ Palmore, what a terrific co-captain he is, playing the Raider position for Navy. Third down and about a yard. And Navy will move their front about every down, and they're blitzing now about 50% of the time. So they've got to win matchups outside. Here's the third and one. I would think Houston would run the ball. Might be the quarterback who does, and it is King, and he can go. He was a real weapon a week ago in the loss in New Orleans. Had a couple of long runs. Tyrus Wooten brings him down. He had a five and a first down for the Cougs. Designed runs with uh, King have made a difference in this football team. That's really why he's playing. He does have a high release. He's got a quick release, uh, but he's a guy that they feel like is really the future of their offense. Catalan is back in a tailback number two. And he'll get it and you can't find it. Pile kind of moves maybe back to the original line of scrimmage so it's going to be no gain there. A lot of tacklers in there for Navy led by Jarvis Polo number 90 and Tyler Sales 91 second to 10. Yeah coach Apple White was really concerned about the front seven for Navy. They're really tough. And you can see they're blitzing a lot more now. They're moving around. It's not the typical Navy defense that just sits. They're going to move the front and come after it. Dale Pearson in his 22nd year as the coordinator for Navy defense. King has some time. Going to go deep down the field in the coverage and making a great adjustment was Linnell Bonner at the 35-yard line. Came back, sun in his eyes, makes the grab. Yeah, good job of maximum protection up front, but the best thing was the throw. The outside throw to Bonner, who's the slot. You get him on number five. North. Big play. Quick throw, Bonner again after the 32-yard gain. He puts his foot in the ground. Makes a couple of Navy defenders miss. Dragging tacklers, and he's finally brought down at the 12-yard line. So that's 24 yards for Bonner. 56 yards in the last two plays for Bonner. And talking to both sets of coaches, and Houston's going really fast now. Get the ball to your speed guys in space, and that's what they're doing right now. Now they get it to Dunbar, number 88, on a similar-looking play. This one not going to be as productive. Going to gain two, second down and eight from the 10-yard line. Palmore on the stop. Houston going really, really fast. They're doing that in the goal line area to try to keep Navy from bringing in different defenses. Make it second and six at the eight-yard line. King, he'll keep it. He'll roll. And he will be brought down at the 10. He had one receiver he was trying to look at in the corner of the end zone. DJ Palmore wasn't going to allow that to happen. So it's going to be a loss and sets up third down. Yeah, DJ's a captain. Captains have to step up when you get down in the red zone. Houston's red zone offense has not been what their coaches want. So this is a key third down. Quarterback draw. Got Touchdown. It. Perfectly blocked by Houston, and it's De'Aaron King. Catalan with a big block to help out his quarterback, and Houston is on the board first. Seventh rushing touchdown for De'Aaron King. Six plays, 68 yards in two minutes and 16 seconds. And Novikov on for the PAT. He hasn't missed one this season. So Houston playing with some quick tempo against Navy, able to punch this one across. Well, you try to spread them out. Then you've got your one back inside. You've got big split. Spread Navy out. Get speed on the Navy defense. And all you do is you take your best player on the field, let him turn it up for the score. 7-0 Houston. With Jen Latta, Mac Brown, Dave Lamont, and our ESPN crew, hoping you're enjoying your Thanksgiving football weekend. With Houston in front here, 7-0. That's going to go through the end zone for a touchback. I've heard uh, the pitch now is high. The fullback got hit, but A.B. did a great job to keep it. And Malcolm Perry, the 
It's gained a 13 all the way out to the 38 yard line there. And you know, sometimes when you don't see, that time you watch the fullback take a big hit, Mac, and the play goes away from him. These guys are so good at what they do because they do it over and over and over again. Malcolm Perry, uh, the way they do things, he's one of the best players on their team. They've got some A backs hurt now. He's a tailback today, normally plays quarterback. And there's the chance he might still play a little quarterback today as the day goes on. High is now in at fullback. A late pitch here to Brown, and Houston was ready for it. It'll be a short game there. Nick Thurman, number 91, in there on the stop, along with Jeremy Winchester, 24. So you got, he looks like second at about eight. Yeah, you try to slow play the quarterback, and that's what happened that time with Thurman, is don't make you pitch it too quickly, and that allows the linebackers and the safeties to fill. That was a tremendous play by Thurman. Already at 111 remaining in this opening quarter. Pitch here to High. Running left, good running by High. Well blocked. He's driven out right about where the marker is. You saw Terrell Williams 23 and Winchester 24. Let's see if they move the chains. Or is he short? Looks like he's a yard short. After Chris High sat and watched the entire Notre Dame game in the cold. They have his full focus today, so Chris is running hard. He's a great kid, just made a mistake last week. Two out of four on third down. You're already seeing time of possession favoring the mids, but the scoreboard is not. You've got Ed Oliver over the center. Parker Wade's just 280. It's a mismatch. And they go right at him with Gargiulo, and he got the first down. They needed one, he got two. And Oliver was in there on the stop, and you can hear hand popping all the way where we're at. Good power up inside. Ed Oliver in the center, and a, a battle up inside. You've got a lot of guys like Carter fighting it, but Gargiulo, big fullback, leans forward for the first down. No hurry for Navy to start this next play. We're going to see the end of the first quarter here at John O'Quinn Field. With Navy first and 10 at their own 49 yard line. The Cougars get the De'Ara King touchdown run as they look for their seventh win. Navy looking for a seventh win before they get ready for the biggest game in college football against Army in December. We welcome you back to ESPN College Football presented by Vizio. Houston leading 7 0 as we start the second quarter. With the mids having the football at their own 49-yard line, you see that they love to rush the ball on first down, and that's a pretty good pace there at 4.7. They did go down on their opening drive and miss a 40-yard field goal. Yeah, their entire offensive game plan is based on first downs to ahead of the chains and running the fullback right up inside the tackles. Seven different mids have handled the ball so far in the rushing game. Down to three. They snap on two. Fullback Garjulo just running right through defenders. Picks up a solid seven. Kamike uh, Egbole finally able to drag him down. The junior from Galena Park, Texas. But that's a good first down gain. And we have uh, Houston. Looks like Oliver's a little shaken up. And the training staff is going to walk him off. Yeah, they're running the ball up inside well. So then they can take the fullback a little wider. And they can run him outside the tackles because they've already established up inside. So number 50, Emil Fleming will come in, a sophomore, to take over for Oliver. Garjula, by the way, Mac, is the most carry so far with five for 20 yards. His sixth carry, big collision with the linebacker, Hines. Did he move the chains, Garjula? Looks like it's a first down. It's really interesting that they run inside the chains, then they run outside the chains uh, at the tackles. And, and now they're right back inside for a first down. Ed Oliver's back in the game. And He's not ran. a good player. He's a great player. He's not going to stay over there long. No, and they ran right up the gut with him out of there, too. It's a bigger hole. They'll do it again with Gargiulo, and this is just a battering ram approach by the junior from Freehold, New Jersey. He'll get down to the 24-yard line in a very late flag. Two flags coming in. This is what they do. You, you're so worried about 
your eye discipline. You're so worried about your techniques. You're looking for the option, and they just keep pounding you with that fullback. You're not going to see anything else until you stop the fullback. After the play was over, unnecessary roughness, defense number 23. Half the distance to the goal from the end of that run. Automatic, first down. That's really the first time we've been able to show you Charles Lamartina, our head referee today. So it's Terrell Williams hit with that penalty. Well, and you get frustrated because they keep the ball for four, they keep it for five, they keep it for seven, and then they squirt a fullback dive up inside, and uh, you come in a little bit late. Navy, again, has had trouble with red zone defense, I mean offense, and that's not something that they normally do. So they're going to hand it off here to Malcolm Perry, and Perry, no trouble there getting in the end zone. Touchdown for the mids. So they went away from the fullback up the middle that time. They get you looking at fullback, at fullback, at option. And this is a counter sweep. So they start the option look to the left, and then Perry comes up underneath against the grain. Houston loses their eye discipline on defense. They're all chasing the option to their right, and Perry steps in with great speed for an easy score. For Navy, that was a pretty short drive. Three minutes and 39 seconds. Eight plays, 75 yards. And we are even early in the second quarter, 13.42 remaining. Okay, so let's look at these linebackers and, and safeties. Looks like the option's going to the left because the quarterback opens up to the left. He turns it back underneath to Perry. What a play call for a touchdown. Seven up. Navy with an impressive drive, 13.42 to go. In this battle of two six-win teams, they know they're bowl eligible, but obviously want to finish off their seasons in style. Got Lede and McLemore awaiting the kick. Taking the eight-yard line, this will be Lede. Navy is excellent on kick coverage, and he and ball's loose. Navy has it at the 21-yard line. It looked like Taylor Heflin forced the fumble, and let's see who got it. Miles Davenport, 56, fell on it. For Navy to win, they have to win the penalty numbers and they have to win the turnover ratio. When they do that, they usually win the game. Heflin just strips the ball loose. You've got to take care of the ball. So the first turnover by either team. We'll get to Jen in just a moment here. We'll be go to A.B. and the fake to Gargiulo and that time a solid defensive play by Garrett Davis. One of the top tacklers in the American Conference of the safety, a hit at the nine yard line, very short gain there. Perfect defense, take the dive at the line of scrimmage, make the quarterback pitch it, and then you've got your safety fill because your corners turned everything up, and Davis has a perfect tackle in space. It's all about red zone offense and defense now. Who wins in the red zone? You've got to make them kick a field goal here after the turnover. Second down, nine. They can get the first down without the TD, it looks like. Pitch to Perry, gets one block. Perry ducks inside to the five-yard line. Third down and four. Now, Dave, they get you playing assignment football, and you're sitting, and you're thinking about your dive. You're thinking about your quarterback. You're thinking about a pitch, and they either hit you with the fullback or they hit you with a sweep downhill like they did on that play. Be interesting here on third down and four because they can get a first down instead of the touchdown. Will they take a field goal or will they take two downs here? I think they go two downs. Four out of six so far on third downs. Maybe with a handoff to Perry. Perry, it is short of the first down by about a yard. They need to get to the one. Same inside counter sweep. Option to the field. But they're not kicking field goals now. Nope, they just bring a swap out a big body and take out a wide receiver. Brandon Cologne leaves. They brought in Jake Hawk, 57. Here's where they can get you. Dive, quarterback, option. Now they do the short motion to see what Houston's going to do. Is it man coverage? Is it zone? 
Are they moving the linebackers with motion? Amy will keep it. This is going to be interesting. They might have the first down. Houston's players say they do not. Navy's not going anywhere yet. The referee, turnover on downs. It'll be Cougars ball at the two. Tackle made by Matthew Adams. What a great stop by Houston. Now you've got the fake dive and the quarterback follow. Those guys stepped up and penetrated, penetrated the defensive line, got up under the pads of the Navy offensive lineman, and then the linebackers and safety step up to make a huge stop in this ball. And it really wasn't even that close. No gain on that play, so now the Cougars will have awful field position, but they have stopped Navy with 9.45 to go in this half. And that was after a turnover, so that is a huge stop on the short field. Now off the fumbled kickoff return. King's going to keep it, gets a couple of key blocks, puts the feet down very nicely at the five, and he'll gain eight out to the ten-yard line before he's brought down there by Elon Nash. Dave Houston's got to stay on the field here some because the Navy offense is wearing down the Houston defense, and that's why they win so many games in the fourth quarter. They've got to get some first downs. Plus field position, too. Field position's been off. Well... Well, the car just got popped there by Jarvis Polu and Tyler Sales for a loss. So here comes a big third down and four. Yeah, you can't afford to turn this one back over. And it's obvious Houston's game plan is put King in space or get the ball to their faster receivers to the outside. Empty backfield. Could be a quarterback draw. Now they're going to drop it off instead. Bonner. Bonner's going to get the first down that Houston had to have and is still fighting for yardage and gets outside the 20 to the 23. Linnell Bonner, a senior from right here in H Town. Really smart. No backs in the backfield. Spread it out. Try to get it to your great player in space and let him turn it up like a sweep for an easy first down. Looks like a little hold out there. Be careful. Blocking his best. Yeah, well, they didn't block very well on that particular play. So you see 91 sales there, joined by Jackson Pittman, a sophomore from Antioch, Tennessee. That's going to be a loss of a couple of yards. It'll be second down and 12. Yeah, concern for Houston is they're not able to run the ball. Right now, all their, with a conventional running back, all their running game has come with King, their quarterback, or getting the ball outside the short passes which is like a run. Carr is being looked at by the trainers. Catalan is back in number two. He gets the football on this little swing pass and is able to work it down to the 23-yard line with some good footwork, but maybe he was waiting for him. And by the way, Mac Houston only has 22 yards and nine tries on the ground. Yeah, that, that's a real concern. Catalan's a really good player. Catalan's a really good player. We signed him at Texas. He stayed for a year. He transferred when Major came over here. But they, they're going empty again. They obviously feel like this puts them in space with some fast guys outside. Or quarterback draw. Navy brings the pressure. It's picked up. King, everything he has on that pass for Lark. And it's broken up. Tyrus Wooten and Courtney Lark. Mano a mano right in front of the Houston sideline. And it's busted up. It'll be fourth down. Yeah, Wooten's their best defensive back. And Houston felt like to win the game, they had to win the 50-50 balls that are deep like Lark in this situation. Lark's got to catch this ball. He's got to jump up high, catch it at the, the top of his jump. And for Navy to win, they felt like they had to stop the quarterback running game and make him throw deep, and they had to cover one-on-one. -on -one. That's a win for Navy. Greg Scott awaits this punt. Well, he's hooked one, and now he's sliced one. He also got run into. Yeah, fans here, and there are a lot of them not real happy that Miles Davenport got a piece of Dane Roy, the punter. So, A.B. gets great field position their own 45. Straight drop back for A.B. He wants to go down the middle of the field, and it is caught at the 15-yard line by Tyler Carmona. His 14th catch, that makes him Navy's leading receiver on the year. They're going to throw it a couple of times a game. They fake the option up inside. They've run so many times on first down. They've got their best receiver on Williams, a safety. And Williams is there. He just can't make the play. Carmona with an outstanding catch. 40-yard pickup on that one. Yeah, you lose your eye discipline. You stick your nose down into the option. All of a sudden, the receiver's running by you.
Now the cheer to Malcolm Perry. Perry, very well for a guy who might have a suspect ankle. He certainly doesn't play like it at the moment. He gains three there, second and seven. Yeah. He's not even just fast, he's quick. Gets so, up in the hole quick. Take a look here. Those big numbers next to Zach A.B. who's <laughs> thrown 66 coming into the day, those are guys who did it in single games, okay? So Gardner Minshew at East Carolina, 68. Luke Falk at 69 for Mike Leach. I mean, that's just crazy. Folks, that's A.B. for the season. Yep. The entire year to show you how little but effective Navy throws the ball. Gargiulo rumbling in for a six-pointer. Touchdown, Mids. You know, they're not going to beat you with a pass. They're going to beat you with a fullback dive. And that's why you have to stay after the dive every play. So now they've run a couple of sweeps. They've run a couple of misdirection plays. You start looking around. You start getting to the outside because you lose your eye discipline on the option. And Gargiulo, the fullback, squirts up inside for an easy score. Again, you look at these Navy scoring drives. Mac, that only took a minute and 20. That might be the shortest scoring drive they've had all year. Yeah, they may not be happy with it. <laughs> I think they're happy with what the uh, number on the big board says, 14 to 7. Navy with six minutes to go in this half. Nothing subtle about this. Fullback. Navy in charge of this one, 14 to 7. By the way, that is not their shortest drive of the season. They had a 13 second drive on one play on a Malcolm Perry run this year. Pressure's back on Houston now. Got to keep the ball for a while. Got to get some points going into halftime. Now Brandon McDowell replacing the day who fumbled the last kickoff. And a flag comes in back. King under some pressure tripped and down he goes. Josh Webb they got an ankle and dropped him. And Once now, again good contain. Well you lost three or four there. Yeah. How aggressive do you want to be here. Well, now you probably go in you, you run a quarterback draw something simple hand it off to your back and, and go get some rest and get ready for the second half change the game plan. Oh, going to throw it quickly instead. It's going to be caught at the 10 to the 15 and out of bounds is Linnell Bonner. But field position, we talked quite a bit about it, quite a bit about it today. Navy has started at their own 43 on average. Houston, their own 16. Yeah, we said Navy beat you with lack of penalties. It's been one and one. They beat you with lack of turnovers and winning the turnover battle. But they really beat you with time of possession and field position. And off to Duke Catalan. And he is brought down to the 21. He'll be short of the first down. And uh, Houston is heading to the locker room following their head coach, Major Applewhite. So Navy with some short drives. Pounding the ball up the gut and then going wide when they need to, leading 14 to 7 over Houston. Coming up after the break, the Lexus halftime report with Kevin Agandi and Booger McFarland. Stay with us. Gorgeous day in downtown Houston for this matchup between Navy and the Houston Cougars as you're watching the American Conference on ESPN. So along with Jen Latta and Mac Brown, Dave Lamont and Mac, not surprisingly, Navy is doing exactly what everybody who ever plays them knows what they're going to do, but it is so hard to stop that triple option. Well, they're so good, and they told us yesterday they have to establish the fullback inside the tackles, and that's exactly what they've done today. If you look at the fullback up inside, that's what they do, north and south for the touchdown. Then they're going to come outside the tackles. It may be the fullback, but in this case, it's the loaded play with the quarterback, A.B., and he turns up for seven yards, which is a huge gain for them. Then if you stop the dive and you take the quarterback, let's pitch it outside to Perry, and he's quick, he's fast, and he's on the corner. Guys are hard to stop. And the numbers, of course, time of possession is something we've been watching all day, and Navy dominating in that regard. They have more yards, more first downs. The only thing they don't have, and that's not exactly a shot, because they have fewer passing yards than UH. But time of possession is so key, 20 minutes and 29 seconds. But the Cougs will get the ball first to start this half, 
And this is McDowell 10 yard line after the short kick McDowell will be brought down around the 28 yard line as we go to the field and Jen Latta. Well hey there guys I just talked to Major Applewhite who said he's not surprised that Navy is controlling the clock. That's what they do. He said though that they have gotten out of assignment a few times. They need to be more disciplined. That fullback position is of course giving them fits. I asked about the play of his quarterback King. He says well actually he hasn't been out there on the field very much but when he has he's protected the football and we're happy about that. All right Jen thank you very much. We'll see what De'Ara King does at the quarterback position. Just his third start and fourth appearance this season. A converted wide receiver. At his breakout game and the win over USF. King will come out firing and it will be a first down and more soft coverage that time. Against Stephen Dunbar. And Dunbar fights for some additional yards. He'll get to the 41. Wooten on the stop. First down. And major work for me. He was really good at making adjustments. So we can see at halftime. To start the second half, let's get the ball to our wideouts outside quickly. King again, quick throw this time to his right, and it's going to be Bonner again. Bonner fighting for first down yard, and she's going to be really, really close. Jared Ryan, Alon Nash, and they're on the stop. And Tyrus Wooten is still out at corner for Navy, so that could be a key here. They're going to play more zone defense probably with a sophomore in there instead of their older senior that's really their best corner. It is a first down. King could drop it to Catalan here. Instead, he's going to go to the second level. And, oh, did he hang on? No, it would have been a Sports Center top 10 highlight if Linnell Bonner had been able to hang on to that one. That's a little counter play. Starts to the right. Comes back. The throw is way too high. But Bonner, who I feel like is the best receiver for Houston, he has a chance to make the play of the week. He has six catches for 89. King 12 of 16 for 154. McLemore and Corbin now in at receivers. Catalan sprints out of the backfield. It is a quarterback draw. It's a run pass option, actually. And King will keep the football. And Max, funny, I was going to say I haven't seen King run as much as I thought he would. And then he takes off here on an RPO. And I know he's had a sore ankle. But also, when they go no backs, he can throw it to the fast guy spread out, but it gives him a chance to run. Puts more pressure on the Navy front. On third and two, great catch made. And fighting for the first down yards is Stephen Dunbar on the far side, right in front of the mids bench. This is going to be close. I think we finally said. Let's quit worrying about the running game inside. Let's throw outside. Quick screen to Dunbar outside. Really good block on the corner by Leslie. But the play is made by Dunbar as he turns up. And it looks like they've spied it short. They do, and they bring in a second tight end. Romello Brooker, number 82, comes in. They're going to load up that right side of the line. Well, this is a huge play. King on the keep. First down. Got to the 30 to the 29 yard line. Got a big block from Mulba Carr before Win Howard, number 51, made the stop for Navy. This has been their go to play. It's their red zone play, it's their short yardage play. It's just a power sweep with the Eric King to the left going downhill. They feel like Josh Jones, their left tackle, is their best offensive lineman, and you put it in your best player's hands in those situations. First time, a little life here for the Houston offense. Carr staying low to the ground, gets inside the 25, down to the 22 yard line, looks like maybe the 23. That's a gain of about six. And Palmore and Williams in there on the stop. Good job by Brian Johnson, the offensive coordinator, Houston, make, spreading them out, making Navy run. North and south, right and left, and then handing the ball off underneath to the back. King, quick throw again. Bonner, making one miss, but not the rest of them. Slowed down there by Jared Ryan, allowed Micah Thomas, also number 44, to come over. We only had four penalties in the game today, just one against Navy, and now three against Houston. And really, Houston's got to do a better job of blocking on the perimeter with their big receivers. Well, McCarr is split all the way closest to you to the left of the quarterback. King has some time, now flushed, hit as he throws in the traffic, and the catch is made, and a flag comes in. 
Might have targeting here. Taylor Heflin 54 and the receiver Bonner is down. Personal foul. Targeting. Defense number 54. Half a distance to the goal. An automatic first down. That play is under review. Well, and Dave, I've said this earlier in the year. Don't make the kids lead the field. Yeah, I agree with you Let so them much. Stay out here and lead their team and help and help the younger linebacker going in. I hate the fact that they make the kids go inside. Now, King on the keeper. Inside the five, driven down in between the one and the two. Caitlin Williams, number seven, hit him first. And Houston, this has been so much their best drive of the game. It's not even funny. And that's their best running play behind big Josh Jones, 74, the left tackle again. One more time. Where have I heard the phrase repeat successful plays before? RSP. Mo McCarr with a great block, and he is shaken up on the play. That'll be Novikov on to try to even things up here with 3.27 to go in the third quarter in a quarter where Navy has hardly touched the football. We've had a complete reversal of the first half regarding yardage and time of possession. Houston's pulling a Navy. Well, they ran a lot of very similar plays. Run the quarterback. Navy does it. Houston does it too. Well, Major Applewhite, now the head coach at Houston, but my partner, Mac Brown, knows him well, having coached him in Texas, where he was an outstanding quarterback, bowl games, co-offensive player of the year, winner as a starter. Yeah, he was a competitor. He was smart. He was a tremendous leader. He got guys to believe in him, and that's what he did at halftime to get these guys playing like they have in the third quarter. We look up, Dave, after not having the ball the whole first half in the third quarter, Houston had the ball seven minutes, five seconds, 18 plays to Navy. Only 4.28, seven plays. We have us a game. Navy really faking it to Garzula now on two consecutive plays. He'll keep it that time for a solid gain of five. It'll be second down and five. In studying Navy, you, you understand that Navy's like a running back, and he throws every now and then. But he is a running back. Now, this is for the whole game day, but Houston has flipped this time of possession in the third quarter, but this is why Navy usually wins fourth quarter games because they wear the other team out. Well, A.B. in the opening game of the season against Florida Atlantic, which took almost six hours to complete because of weather, ran for 235. He has over 1,300 rushing yards this season, makes the late pitch here to Perry. Perry tackled high. Ooh, this is really close for the first down. Myers and Davis in there on the stop. The chains are moving. It's the first down. And we're seeing a simple adjust, adjustment from Navy at halftime. They're running the quarterback and the outside stuff more than the fullback inside right now. But you have to honor that first fake. You have to, because they're going to hand it to him again before we leave. A.B. faked it to high, and that time he got hit a couple of times before finally brought down by... DeWan Hines, Godfrey slowed him down and set him up for Hines. That's a loss of a yard. Yeah, you love guys like Hines that are 230 pounds, and they were quarterbacks, they were receivers, they're smart, they're very athletic, but now they've gained enough weight that they can be an impact all over the field. This guy has really good instincts. He is a senior, 20th in the NCAA in tackles. He came into the game with 93. One of the real leaders on this defense as well. Now you've got Navy in second long. They're not as comfortable, second 11. Navy's going to take a deep drop. He's going to be flushed out, and he's going to be sacked. Ed Oliver finished him off. It was Carter who flushed him toward Oliver, and Oliver gets the sack. That would be four and a half on the year for Ed Oliver, and we have a Navy lineman shaken up. When you're Houston's defense, you get Navy in second long, then they don't run the fullback. Now their option game's gone, so they try to throw, and they're their skill set is not to pass protect. That's why a lot of teams don't use this. Offensive linemen want to go to the pros, and, and a lot of these guys are two stars that are tough, but they can't pass protect on obvious passing situations like that. Great stop by 
uh, Houston, and now you're third and 14. And the third quarter will run out. So 14 14. Navy and Houston, both teams seeking a seventh victory. We go right down to the final 15. Fourth quarter about to begin here with Navy and Houston. Another look at this big, beautiful city of Houston. DDECU Stadium, John O'Quinn Field, and Navy facing third and 13. It's tough on any team, but on a team that does not pass the ball that much or that well, we'll see what they do. And they could run it here for field position. Maybe. He's being spied, throws back across the body, passes tipped and incomplete. DeWan Hines got his hands on it, and it'll be fourth down and 13. This was a naked bootleg where A.B. fakes the sweep, comes out of it to the right. It's not a great play on a play action on fourth down and, or third down and 15, but really good play by DeWan Hines because he had his eyes, he kept his eye discipline, he stayed underneath the crossing tight end, he found him and tipped the ball. It looked to me almost back like Hines was spying A.B. that if A.B. decided to take off, Hines was going to do whatever A.B. did and try to equal it. I think so. Houston's changed momentum in this game. Now a short kick to the 20-yard line. Brandon McDowell to the 28 before he's going to be brought down. Tackle made there by Wynn Howard, number 51. So it appears that the Cougars have momentum, as Mac mentioned. Can they maintain it against this tough Navy squad with a long way to go in the fourth? Earlier in the game, we told you the story of Jaron Jasper, the 14-year-old son of Navy offensive coordinator Ivan Jasper, who is awaiting a heart transplant. I talked to his mom just earlier today, and Jaron is, per usual, a huge fan of Navy football. That was a picture of him and his siblings watching this game, obviously watching intently now, as we have a 14-14 game here in the fourth quarter. All right, Jen, thank you. That pass dropped by Catalan. So, Jaron, on behalf of Coach and everybody, working for ESPN. We just hope this has the outcome that you want it to have. Yeah, the Navy coaching staff is such a family and they've all been so supportive, but anybody like us who have kids, grandkids, we're, we're pulling for you, bud. King on second to ten. There's Dunbar. And he just lowered his shoulder right into Obano. So we have not seen the return of Tyrus Wooten since he was injured. That's a gain of 11 there. And that's turning out to potentially be a significant loss here for the mids. Obvious game plan change at halftime. Jump the running game right now. And get the ball to your player, fastest player's hands in space. Bonner and Dunbar, two of the most successful receivers in Houston football history. And they've had some really good ones here. King with a shoulder fake, has time. Dunbar's wide open. The defender fell down. Dunbar breaks the tackle, and he's gone. He is gone. He is gone. Touchdown, Cougars. on that drive. Replay 73 yards. First time Houston has gone ahead since the first quarter when they led 7 nothing. So De'Ara King responsible for all three Cougar scores. Yeah, he looks to the left, looks back to the right, looks off the safety, hit him in the space, missed the tackle. Houston speed all the way down for a touchdown, 21-14. The NASA space program established in 1958 by President Dwight Eisenhower. Mission Control has been home to Houston since 1965. The center manages flight control for the space program and currently involves astronauts aboard the International Space Station. A fascinating place that would be to visit sometime. And Dave, this game's totally flipped. 184 yards for Houston, 24 for Navy in the second half. 
and Navy's offense has to turn the momentum back. And a little problem on the kick, and Hayes falls on the ball at the seven, and that's where Navy will start. You had the two players collide for the football, and Reggie Hayes and Daryl Bonner did not communicate, and Hayes ended up having to eat it at the seven-yard line. Navy. Get out to the 14 yard line for a seven yard pickup. Adams on the stop. This is Navy working from their worst starting field position today. It's amazing how many games that Navy get into that are really close at the end. I think like 40% of all Kenny's games have come down to one possession, which is amazing. They're That's hard. what this one looks like it's going to be, too. They're hard to blow out because you don't get to have the ball to blow them out. No. And if they get blown out early, they can't catch up. Right. So that's their nightmare. They've played this game like they want to. Now they've got to get back in the game. A.B. again. They continue to fake to the fullback. A.B. will have a first down of the 19. He's carrying the ball much more in this second half. We're not seeing nearly as much of Garciulo or High. Well, it's obvious at halftime, Houston said tackle the fullback. The guy's making way too many yards, so they've done that. And now they're making Navy go to the second or third option or different place. Well, they brought in Michael Rayford as a lineman along with Jake Hawk. Hawk had not checked out. They've lost four to Higgins for the day, it appears, with an injury. Also, receiver Zach Frade was carted off to the locker room earlier. AB again. And you can see the pursuit that time of Carter, number 52. He read the play, but just had to catch up to AB. That's a short gain, second down and long coming up. You know, Carter's 6'2", 285, and he's been all over the place today. He missed a lot of games because of injury. They're really fortunate to have him back. Yeah, they look to be a better football team with him in the lineup, along with Oliver, number 10, standing there right next to him. Nick Thurman, 91, also a very fine player for this defense, coordinated by Mark D'Onofrio and Clay Jennings. Yeah, Carter and Oliver could play for anybody. Now they go up the gut with a fullback to the 26. So here's a gigantic third down and three. Another tackle by Ed Oliver, but they have to stick that fullback in there every now and then just to make those linebackers and defensive tackles stay at home. That's only his third carry in this half. Big down for momentum and field position. And Navy has not converted a third down in this half. They're over three. Maybe no chance, no chance. Short the ruling is not a fumble. That maybe was down before the ball popped out. Matthew Adams is going to come up with a big hit here, and also Dewan Hines was there again. That's a good play. They slowed Abby outside, and that was uh, Dewan Hines, and, and he forced him back into Adams, who had the pursuit from the backside to stop him for no game. What a stop by Houston. So Owen White out of Portland, Oregon, the sophomore, kicking to Brandon McDowell, who's had a pretty good game today as a kick returner, especially in punts. Houston sets up the return. White, this good kick. McDowell, 30-yard line, in trouble. Down he goes right away. Navy with tremendous coverage that time, the hit by D.J. Palmore. Mac touched on this earlier, but Navy in close games, they're used to it under Ken Niamatololo. Nearly half of their games decided by a possession. They tend to win them. And eight and six in 14 of the last 24 decided by one possession. We go back, Mac, to points left behind. A missed field goal from 40 yards out and a stop by the Houston D on fourth and one from the Houston two. That's 10 points right there. I kind of feel like this is the biggest drive of the game because if Houston can go up two scores here, Navy is going to honestly be in trouble. And Navy's lost two starters on defense. Catalan. Nice cutback and good blocking, and Catalan is going to get a solid eight start. They lost a linebacker, Taylor Heflin, who was ejected for targeting, and they've lost Tyrus Woot in their fine corner. Yeah, they're running the just a outside zone. And uh, Brandon Jones came up, and he had nobody around him. But outside linebacker, number three for Navy, really good cut by Catalan. Well, the car is back in, tailback number 34. And he'll flip it. 
Now here to Derek McLemore. McLemore, 45. McLemore gets to the 50. So a little bit of a trick play that time on the end around for 13. You've been running the sweep. You look like you're trying to run some power now. You run the sweep to the right. You pitch it back. Look at the big block by 74 Jones on the outside. King has a couple of options to throw. He'll take the one right down the middle of the field. McLemore with another big play down the sidelines. He tight ropes it. No. He's out of bounds at the 28. The line judge caught him, but still, it's a first down. McLemore, that's just his second catch this year, and it's a big one. Game well, 21. Really good play by King. He looks to the left. He starts to throw a slant there. He comes back to the right. Goes all the way to the right side. Obviously, McLemore knew he'd stepped out of bounds. A lot of confidence with this offense right now for Houston. That's going to be the 20th completion for King as Catalan gets inside the 25-yard line to the 22. King now 20 of 25, over 270 yards. He has a touchdown pass, and he has run for the other two Houston scores. And Navy needs to make a stop here because they're not a quick strike offense. There's only nine minutes left to go in the game. Catalan is now the tailback number two. Houston's not in any hurry. Design rollout for King. He has the blocking that pass, not even close. Courtney Lark was the intended receiver. Here's third and five, and a little bit of an opening for the mids defense. And give the Houston offensive staff credit too, Dave. They've taken advantage of Tyrese Wooten being out. Mm -hmm. And some younger guys in his place. They empty the backfield and put the running back car to the right of the quarterback. He's the closest receiver to you in your picture. Look for a quick throw or quarterback draw. He wants to throw it. He's got some room to run. He's going to be faster to the 20. Slipped. He slipped shy of the first down, I think. All right. Time for a coaching decision. If it's indeed fourth down and less than a yard to go, do you go ahead and take the three, or do you try to go for the big one right here? Caden Novikov, a junior from San Antonio. Nine of 11 on the year. Seven of eight inside 40. This will be 35. Mason McClendon, the holder. Nick Wildberger will snap. Perfect snap. Good looking spot. Good looking kick. 24-14 Houston over Navy. They have outscored the mids 17-0 in this half. Can Navy, with 7.57 remaining in all three of their timeouts, mount the comeback? With General Adam Mac Brown, Dave Lamont, and our ESPN crew kicking off your Thanksgiving football Friday with a good one here at TDECU Stadium on the Houston campus. 14, they've been the better team in the second half. Brown and Bonner await this kick. It will be Bonner. He'll wave it off. Touchback, 25-yard line for the junior quarterback, Zach A.B. And I don't know how that was not fumbled by High or by Perry as Houston's defense really penetrated there for a loss. Ed Oliver again, number 10. You put Ed Oliver and Gerard Carter in there. They are as good as anybody in the country. At penetrating. Those guys have really hurt the Navy offense the second half. Clock under six minutes. And that is destroyed initially. Maybe back to the line of scrimmage, but Mac mentioned Carter. He wiped that play out and waited for help, and he got plenty of it. He was very patient. Because it's a counter sweep, actually. It's a quarterback sweep. He tries to pitch it to the left. He comes back to the right. And Carter keeps low pads. He stays in place. He keeps his feet moving. Makes a really good tackle on the fastest player on the Navy team in space. Houston's defense, one of seven to hold opponents under 25 the last four years. Perry, they try to trick play here. Houston's all over it. There's a flag down. 
As rumbling through is Craig Scott, number 82. He's finally shoved out of bounds. Let's see what the flag is at the 34-yard line. It's going to be holding against Navy. Holding. Offense number 61. 10-yard penalty. Third down. So instead of taking fourth down and 10, they'll take third and 20 here, Mac. And Dave, let's look at this. Look at the top at the receiver. He's wide open for a touchdown. It's a double move. The corner comes up. If they can get this free, it's touchdown Navy. But you're asking a receiver to read that and make that throw. Well, with the guy in his face. And they've decided to pass on the penalty and take the loss, which is the obvious move. Four penalties against Navy, 37 yards. So it'll be fourth and 15. Another punt here for Owen White. Houston better be looking for a fake here. I think it's too far. And White instead cranks this punt. McDowell make a fair catch on the 19-yard line, and Houston is sitting in a great position with four minutes and 30 seconds to go, and they have the ball and a two-score lead after a 48-yard punt. Now a handoff to Carr, and that's something else to talk about Houston, man. Dear King having played so little, they're going to get a ton of more practice, 15 more practices before whatever bowl game Houston winds up going to. And there's this opportunity here as Navy takes a timeout for King to get even better during that practice period. And King's going to hang on to the ball here, but Navy closing in and maybe a one yard gain. That was Jared Ryan. Have you ever talked about announcers talking somebody running downhill? That was what Jared Ryan did there. Another timeout called by Navy. So third down and eight for the Cougs. Now I think you see something shorter. You see quarterback draw. They're not going to take a chance on the quarterback getting hit and have a fumble. It's quick. And it's caught by McLemore. And he will be short of the first down. And maybe they're going to burn that final timeout. And they have no more timeouts. With this four minutes and 11 seconds remaining here in Houston. They do bring a little bit of heat. And Roy very casually will let this one hit the ground and backed up. He lost a couple of yards on that. So that did not work out, I am sure, the way that the Cougars wanted it done. And now Navy has stalled offensively, Mac, and give a lot of credit to that Houston defense of Mark D'Onofrio and Clay Jennings. Yeah, we said Mark had seen this offense at Georgia or at Miami when he played against Georgia Tech. He coached against this offense, the same guys at Army when he was at Temple. It just takes a while to get used to this because it's hard to practice against it. They've been very impressive on defense the second half. Now you've got your throwing quarterback in. You've got Garrett Lewis because they've got to throw the ball some. Junior from Alabama, Lewis, third quarterback used by Navy today. Comes out firing and throws successfully to Malcolm Perry. Right in front of Major Applewhite that happened at the, around the 32-yard line. They ought to feed Malcolm Perry a lot on that plane going home. <laughs> he has worked all day. Like this player, fast, smart, can catch, can play different positions. It's a 29 yard pickup. Remember, Navy is out of timeouts. Lewis guns it, dropped. 22 yard line, should have been caught. Pass was on time. Craig Scott could not hang on to it, covered by Jeremy Winchester. Stops the clock, 344 to go, second and 10. Tough thing for the defense at Houston now. They have to get totally out of the option mode and get back into drop back pass mode. You're going to play man, you're going to play zone. Don't know a lot about this quarterback, but got to make plays. They're playing too deep zone. Lewis is in trouble. Oliver gets him. Too good. And Oliver just too good. That's a loss of five. Well, and again, the skill set for these offensive linemen at Navy is to run the ball because they do that. 90 plus percent of the time when they're in drop back pass position against one of the best defensive linemen in the country it puts a tremendous amount of pressure on them 14 tackles for Oliver two sacks two and a half tackles for a loss for number 10 in red yeah he's had a season today and that pass delivered fairly well but Scott 
had it knocked out of his hands by Terrell Williams. So here comes fourth down. Yeah, Scott's only caught two passes for 27 yards. He's had two drops in this series. Those are both critical catches. This is the play of the game. This is the game. And you got to get past the sticks, and you're fourth and 15, so you're going to have to throw probably a fade. Perhaps look for 88, Tyler Carmona, their leading receiver. He's at the top of your screen to the right of the quarterback, Garrett Lewis. Going to be here, Colin down here at the bottom, man to man against 24. And he's man to man. Let's see if they go up high. No, they're going the other direction. The this other is almost direction. a hail Mary, and it's intercepted. Get down. Alexander Myers is taken down at the 26 yard line. Here comes a very late flag. There's four flags on the field. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense number 10. 15 yard penalty, Houston retains the ball first down. And Oliver hit with that penalty. So we'll see if he pops somebody after the play was over. He did. Yep, and in the back. Yeah, that was an example of hitting a defenseless player. And normally you would chew him out. I think I'd say, yeah, don't do that again. That'd be, and that'd be the end of the conversation, <laughs> yeah. probably, because he's he's had 14 tackles. He's had a full day. Yeah. Now you run the ball. No gain there, but remember, the mids cannot stop the clock. But Navy's got to strip a ball. They, they've. They've got a blitz. They've got to get a mesh point. They, and, and you'll probably see very few handoffs now, too. And Houston, who is a tempo team, is going to go really slow and try to snap the ball with three seconds left on the clock. But Navy has to force some turnover to have a chance. And if you're Houston, the quarterback, the running back, keep both hands on the ball. No chance somebody strips him. King fake the pass and is getting through to the second level. And that's the ball game. He gets the first down. Mo McCarr gets outside the 30 to the 31. All the higher rated teams are thinking about championship games. They're thinking about playoffs. They're not thinking about that rival. That rival is thinking about you. Well, you know who's thinking about Navy right now? Army. There's no question. And as soon as Navy gets off this field, they'll be thinking about Army. It'll be December 9th. And again, college game day will be in Philadelphia on that day to celebrate the biggest game in college football every year. And this is a huge win for Major Applewhite to have a first half that didn't go well, to have the ability as a first year head coach to change your adjustments and talk your team into winning the second half is really something that bodes well for the future. And from here on in, Houston does not have to run a play. They can take a knee if they like, and they will walk off with their seventh win against four defeats, five conference wins, and they win it in the second half. 262 total yards to 79 for the Naval Academy. And a big day for De'Ara King, 21 of 27 for 277 in the air and a touchdown pass and on the ground two rushing touchdowns and 57 yards on 16 attempts and dave let's thank navy air force army marines all of our military personnel for keeping us safe around the globe while we can come and watch and play football game. now let's think when these young men leave the naval academy they go on to be marines they go into submarines they have a life that most people cannot imagine awaiting for them, and they can't wait. The coaches meet at midfield to shake hands. Navy will fall to six and five, four and four in conference play. Houston improves to seven and four. Final score for the final time: Houston defeats Navy, 24 to 14. Coming up next: PK80 College Basketball Championship, North Carolina and Arkansas. But first, we go back to the studio for the college football scoreboard with Kevin Nagani. Kev. <laughs> 